the one, the only Nate Burleson, GMFB. You literally do everything. And I want to talk about one of your jobs and one of your coworkers. Okay. CBS, before the games, his pops. Of course. The not Those as Sims. cool Sims, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not as cool, but. Or some would say the coolest. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to say. They must be old and not cool if they're saying that. <laughs> but there's this perception of Phil that is, I think, completely wrong, that he's a herb, that he's square. But I don't know, like, what's your experience? Because I think Phil's hilarious. Listen. Uh, Break the mold, Nate. He's a full-fledged fool. Yes. <laughs> now, let me let me give him his credit. He, he's a, a genius when it comes to football, breaking down film. He has all these thoughts in his head. And even pregame, um, you can see him working out his thoughts, which is great because yes. that just shows ultimate preparation. And we're all there. Everybody's sitting there trying to work through those thoughts so they can get through everything they want to talk about so quickly. But um, in between the commercial breaks, yes, some of the funnest times ever. And – I can say this. He, yes. He's a little twisted up here, man. Yes, like it's Phil the Sims. stuff he says, right. the stuff he draws. He can <laughs> sketch out. some stuff that will like it'll blow your mind in a moment. He'll like turn it to you so only you can see it. Yes. Right. And I promise you, if the camera caught it, we, I'd have to call HR. That's amazing. <laughs> I did yeah. not know that. <laughs> he doesn't do that to yeah, like he, us. Tell him to, to show you just this one piece of artistry that he draws okay. quite often. Oh, okay. I'm sitting between, I think, the two most employed people in NFL media. Radio shows, TV shows. Working. No, but I mean, what's it like for both of you guys? Once you leave the game, uh, you realize, all right, I got to bust my ass and work just as hard in my new craft. So, like, every opportunity is like me being a rookie again. And when I was a rookie, I walked in to the Minnesota Vikings and I'm seeing Dante Culpepper in a Theisman fur and I'm seeing Randy Moss swagged out with a baggy suit. And I'm like, <laughs> damn, this is the NFL. These dudes pulling up and Bentleys with spinners on yeah. it. And I'm like, in I'm Minnesota. a baby. I'm a baby. And I got to work not only to make a name for myself, but to, like, get these guys' attention. And that was my goal, to get the greats' attention. So, like, what we do now is if we got to work one, two, three, four jobs, we want to get attention of the masses because we're still working. I saw Strahan a couple years ago, and I was like, what's up, man? Give me a piece of advice. Yeah. He was like, never turn down a job. Uh. He said, guys get comfortable, they start making money, yes. right, and they start turning down opportunities said when you were playing and the coach told you you need to do something you're right? getting in the game did you turn down an opportunity yeah, I was right. like nope he said well don't change yeah because as soon as you get complacent there's another dude with a bigger name maybe has a bigger ring a gold jacket in the closet mm -hmm. and he's going to show up whether he's good or not yes. and if he's great at his job you might not then get we're done. we're done yeah I do want to jump off of something you said a few minutes ago Randy Moss yeah I was going to say you experienced Please. young Randy Moss right you experienced old Randy Moss right the first time I met Randy Moss I knew immediately that um, if I got a at a boy pat on the back from him I've arrived as a wide receiver uh. um, but I went about it the wrong way because I, I was trying to get his attention like a thirsty dude at the end of the night. Like, I was like, all right, as soon as I hit him with this icebreaker, we're going to be best friends forever, man. <laughs> yeah. And I remember one day I was I was getting ready for practice, and uh, I think it was Jermaine Dupri. Had, he had a music video, and he's wearing the Marshall 88 jersey. So I'm, like, in my little dorm room at training camp. I was like, this is it, man. I'm to... And I remember us doing conditioning, and I'm standing next to him, and I'm literally, like, gassing myself up like a dude about to walk across the bar and ask a girl for the number. I was like, all right, man, come on. Don't blow it. Don't blow it. I was like, hey, uh, Randy. Um, voice was cracking. I don't yeah. know what was going on. I'm a grown man. And I was like, did you see the uh, Jermaine Dupree video? You had your jersey on, man. And he's running next to me. He looks at me. He just keeps on running. And I was crushed. Oh. I was like, oh. Listen, I wrote a girl a note, do you like me, yes or no, in the fifth grade. And she crumbled it up and threw it at my face. Oh, man. Randy Moss <laughs> hurt me more. Like, my feelings were crushed. And I was like, damn, I blew it. And then what's crazy is, like, once I started making plays, like, that's when he came and was like, mm. all right, like, I know you love the game and I know you're mm. one of the good ones. It's funny, I think, to hear him say that because I don't think people always realize that football players can also be fanboys. First time Randy Moss came on the plane, I was row 27 by the window, and he said, can I sit here? I was like, yeah, sure, <laughs> sure, <laughs> you can sit here. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, I mean, that's the way I felt. But the like Nate's saying, too, the one thing I learned from him in a hurry is his perspective on the game mm. was like amazing. He could almost see the game almost like a quarterback. He yeah. understood offense and defense. And, you know, he understood when this play was stupid and he wasn't going to tell the coach, that's a stupid play, Sims. That's, you know, whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. I mean, and I just, uh, I really enjoyed being around him. Calvin is the forgotten guy. Yeah. If I'm creating a player in Madden, he's 6'5, running a 4'3, and his name is Calvin Johnson. Yeah. 
but he's never mentioned in the Jerry Rice, T.O., Randy Moss top three. But I would argue he's physically as gifted as any of them, if not more. No question. I mean, it's the same individual that broke Jerry Rice's single season record. Yeah. And I watched him do right. it. I watched games where he'll put up a buck 90, and we go to the meeting, and after a loss, Sean Jefferson, who's a former player, wide receiver, he was our wide receiver's coach. He'd say, Calvin, I need you to do more. <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm thinking, like, damn, what you want to do, go for 250? Yeah. And Calvin wouldn't say anything. Right. He was quiet. You know, his mother – uh, a, a doctor, daddy worked on the railroad, so he had this blend of blue collar and, and high IQ, and that was his approach to life. And he would just nod his head, say, "All right, coach, next game go put up 300." That was wow. that was CJ. Now he was gifted. I seen him bench 225 20 times and racked it on 20 because he didn't want to embarrass the rest of the receivers. Right. I was I was spotting him on that bench. I remember he got like 19. He's like 19, and he goes. <laughs> Uh, more like 20, and he gets up, and everybody's like, oh, CJ's is crazy, 20. <laughs> and then I pull him to the side, I'm like, bro, I seen that. What are you doing? You could have did more. He's like, oh, you noticed? He's like a goofball. <laughs> but he was, he was that type of talent, man. And I, I, when he was playing, maybe I was a prisoner of the moment. I said, if I could choose one, I would choose Calvin. And if he had longevity by his side, right. yeah. um, he would go down as possibly the best receiver ever. If he played 15 years, yes. possibly the best receiver ever. He had a very ever. Terrell Davis career. Yeah, very quick. Nine years. But powerful. Powerful, but it's not enough for us to stack him up with the greats. And you just look at Randy's numbers, you can't put Calvin in that conversation. Yeah. Now, Randy was just pure speed encapsulated. If they put shoulder pads and cleats on Usain Bolt, and he was actually a good football player that can catch and track the ball like no other, yeah. it would be Randy Moss. Yeah. And Randy Moss had the greatest late hands ever. Even though coaches say, don't panic, remember your cues, don't give anything away, like we panic. Like we don't remember our cues and we give everything away. Like <laughs> when the ball's in the air, you start hearing your own breath and you go from and if you're a really good DB, I know it's a small detail, but you can hear a guy breathing hard and then you see his eyes go from here to here, yes. and that right there is a cue that something's coming. Right. Randy would like look, and the ball would be coming, and his face doesn't move, his hands doesn't move, his breath doesn't move, and then right when it gets to him, he's like, Velcro. Like, that's something that you might not see ever. No. Right. Um, so. And that's not something you coach. It's this, something that God said, hey, Randy, I got a little extra for you. Right. You the man. That was awesome.